Hi, I'm Zach with Josh's Frogs, and welcome to our first edition of Frog Talk. Basically, we're going to be answering customer and viewer questions about reptiles, amphibians, and the st stuff we're doing at Josh's Frogs. I frankly have no idea how often these are going to be, but the more often you share and like and tell your neighbor about this stuff, the more often you get to hear me. So it's a win-win. Anyway, we'll start off with our first question of the day. What are the best isopods for crested geckos? Um, I'm personally attached to dwarf white isopods. They've been around a long time. They're soft-bodied, they're tiny. They reproduce really quick and they're pretty affordable, especially compared to some of the other isopods out there. But other accessible, um, acceptable species would be any of the powder blues or powder orange isopods, those line. Um, a lot of the other quote-unquote fancier isopods have a little bit different care needs um, or sometimes you know, dietary habits and stuff that probably want to keep them out of a crested gecko tank. Um, second question. What is the favorite breed of frogs that you sell? Um, first dart frog I ever got back in the early 2000s was Dendrobates leucomelis, the black and yellow or bumblebee dart frog. Still my favorite, had those guys in college, had some roommates who thought I had canaries or something in the, in the closet, the way they called them stuff, and still one of my favorite frogs out there. Um, what's my favorite species of toad? Um, that would definitely be the Asian yellow spotted climbing toad. They're big, they're cool looking, they climb. Um, if you upset them too much, you don't have to worry about getting bit, just peed on, so what's not to love? Um, do you have toads? Yes, we have several species of toads and a lot more in the works. You can check those on over at joshesfrogs.com and there's an animal availability section and check that out. Um, someone's wondering, why is it better to buy frogs from you than from a chain pet store? Well, we only sell captive bred animals. That's not the case for all places you can buy frogs out there. Um, we do extensive disease testing and stuff to ensure that our animals are healthy. And the vast majority of animals we sell are produced here on site. Um, you know, with some animals, especially mantellas and lemur tree frogs, um, those sales directly go to help conservation of those species in the wild. And then uh, we also support other conservation um, and research efforts or whatnot as part of producing animals for the pet trade. So we do that, you support us and help us do more. Are bioactive tanks better than non-bioactive? Um, that's really dependent on the species and the user. Bioactive tanks are initially more complex to set up. Um, they're a lot more involved, they're more expensive, but overall they tend to be lower maintenance and they're a lot nicer to look at. Um, I do tend to see um, animals behave a lot more naturally and sometimes have some tough to breed species produce a little bit more readily in a bioactive tank, but it really depends on what you, the, um, the owner, are looking to learn and willing to fork out initially to get going. But overall, I'm a huge fan of bioactive tanks. I think that they're gonna become more and more popular. Um, but they're definitely not for everyone, so keep that in mind. How to manage plants in a bioactive, as in once they're grown too big for an enclosure? Depends on the plant. Some plants you can prune, but you can always have some pretty sweet house plants if you pull them out of there and pot them up. Um, a lot of times you can do routine pruning. Um, a lot of times if you pinch them right below the growth tip or whatnot, they'll be a little bit bushier though. Are your morning geckos crested gecko food trained? Um, we haven't trained them, but they've learned on their own. So fortunately, they're pretty quick, quick learners. Um, we do feed more, the crested gecko food to our morning geckos pretty regularly, so they're used to it. Do you have any pomilio? We do have a lot of different pomilio. Um, I think around six varieties right now, and that's gonna be increasing as we get some construction and um, some expansion done, uh, which is in progress. Um, we are gonna be working with pomilio more and more in the future, so expect to start to see them available. They are lower producing animals. They don't produce a ton of babies compared to a lot of our other frogs. So you won't ever see a ton of them available um, on the site or whatnot. Most of the time when you see Pomelio available online, chances are they're wild caught imports. Um, there are some breeders who do a good job of producing them that just, you won't ever see large numbers of them available. Do you ship outside of the USA? If it's not alive and never was, absolutely. All of our dry goods we ship worldwide. For alive goods, currently it's the continental US and um, Alaska. Hawaii is really, really restrictive about shipping live stuff too. Um, we do plan to change that in the future. Um, we are working on looking at what it takes for importing and exporting, not only to offer y'all, um, our worldwide audience, a better um, you know, selection of healthy calf bred animals, um, but also to look at what we can partner with around the world with some really skilled producers. Um, a lot of times going hand in hand with conservation to be able to offer healthy calf bred animals from the world over too. What is your opinion of ants? I have some pretty crazy ants. Overall, I prefer most of my uncles, but you know, ants are okay. Um, assuming that was a typo and you meant A-N-T-S, and if that was the case, I know some people feed ants. It's a big portion of the dart frog's diet in the wild. Um, it is risky, so I, would, uh, you know, I wouldn't tend to go through extra strides to offer them to dart frogs or anything on a regular basis. Um, animals can live full, healthy, 
reproductive lives without, you know, that risk. Um, you know, there are some animals out there like your horned lizards or horny toads or whatnot that it's a requirement of their diet. That's another matter. Um, what's the best bioactive enclosure for a tropical house gecko? Um, our biobedding tropical formula would be great for that, coupled with some temperate springtails and dwarf tropical white isopods, um, leaf litter and live plants. Um, tropical house gecko is kind of a loose term, but if you're talking about most of those species that get around four to six inches, I would consider a 12, 12, 18 minimum, and an 18, 18, 24 even a better option. Um, when will you have giant waxy monkey tree frogs? We do have about 50 healthy captive bred juveniles, as well as some um, some uh, captive bred adults that we're raising out for future breeders. So hopefully in the next couple years, but they're big, they take a long time to get big, and we don't like to rush them. Um, ever breed budgets frogs? Sure, anything's possible. Um, they're really cool. We are working with a private hobbyist who produces them every couple few years. It has been a while since he's produced them, but we're hoping to be able to offer them in the near future again. Um, why do some Pac-Man frogs lift their back legs up all weird? Um, you've actually, if you watch, you can notice a lot of frogs doing this. Um, a lot of times it, they kind of do that when they're having a, a large BM. Um, also, most frogs shed every day. And a lot of times they have to kind of work their back legs to kind of get that shed, off, shed skin off of them. And it looks like they're kind of doing some kind of weird shuffly dance. Um, you know, another alternative is Pac-Man frogs are kind of doing that to pad down their dirt or kind of dig into that substrate where they can hang out. Where can a terrarium maker find medium bulk quantity 40 liter sizes of long fiber sphagnum moss these days? I wish you the best of luck. Um, with COVID, there's been a lot of supply issues and sphagnum moss was hard hit. Um, we do source and sell our own Chilean sphagnum moss. We source and bring in by the container load ourselves to help meet those needs. Um, where can I buy stock in this company? Well, if you place a $20 bill, write your personal information on there and send it to me with a self-addressed stamped envelope, I'll help you out. Um, nope, not yet. Mr. Joshua Willard is the only holder of st stock in this company. It's not public, but who knows, maybe in the future. We'll have to hang in there and find out. I have an empty 40 gallon breeder. What should I put in it? That is a loaded question. I would suggest something alive. Um, you have to really think through what you want. Um, you know, a lot of these animals at the low end are gonna live five, 10 years. So think through, kind of strike what catches your fancy and go from there. Um, you know, some good key things I always kind of go through when people are asking me, hey, I want a reptile or an amphibian. You know, do you need to hold it? How much work are you able to do it, put into it? What's your budget? How long are you willing to spend researching it um, beforehand, um, you know, and kind of going forward from there. Um, common answers, if you're looking for things that are handleable, would be um, something along the lines of leopard geckos or a lot of the other semi-arid to arid terrestrial geckos. Um, there's a lot of frogs that would really be happy in there too. Um, heck, even a nice fish tank or a tarantula, but a lot of really going to be depend on you. And since I cannot see you right now because you're possibly on the other side of that camera, um, I can't answer that question, but if you email us with some specifics, we can help you out. That's just info at joshesfrogs.com, by the way. How old do the white tree frogs need to be before shipping out to an owner? That'll vary a bit. Um, we used to go by eight to 10 weeks, even 12 weeks. As we've refined tadpole care and invested heavily in some tadpole raising systems that allow us to feed a lot more heavily, we've been able to get that down a little bit. Um, but the, when they ship out, they're at an inch, and generally that's six to eight weeks, depending on the morph and you know the parent's history and everything there. Um, vast majority of them are at the upper end of that spectrum. A lot of time when we breed whites, we get several hundred to several thousand, and we're always shipping the oldest ones out to customers, so. When will you be doing warehouse tours again? Um, we'll see, we were hoping to do that later this year, but the way things are going, we'll just have to play that by ear. What do you do with adult frogs that you don't sell? Well, hopefully we breed them to make more frogs, but when that doesn't happen, a lot of times we do have frogs that retire when they're no longer breeders from old age. A lot of our employees end up taking pet frogs home. Sometimes we find them homes and, um, you know, in classrooms for teachers' pets, um, things of that nature. Will you be carrying more types of tarantulas or jumping spiders in the future? Boy, howdy, will we. Um, we currently have two full rooms that are about 14 by 16 foot for tarantulas, and we'll be doubling that in the next year or so, as well as doubling our tarantula staff too. So expect to see a lot more of that. Um, seems every week those guys are pulling an extra sack or two of tarantula eggs up there. So it's really cool to see how they're growing. Are you able to sh ship feeders in hotter than usual weather and leave them at the FedEx hub for safety? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times you have the control over where those for an or insects are shipping to, so you can fill that out on the, um, the shipping address portion when you're checking out. I haven't seen too many tomato frogs lately. Will we have them in stock soon? Um, tomato frogs are currently um, provided through our certified breeder program. 
Um, they're something that doesn't breed as frequently, but we actually have our own group in a rain chamber right now. So hopefully with some of these storms we're getting, they'll, they'll do something for us. When will you get your silver pothos back? Um, plant demand has been insane. Um, we're looking at expanding the greenhouse facility over the next couple of years. So I don't have specifics for you, but expect to see a lot more plants and unique way of offering plants via mounts and things of that nature in the future. When will we be getting more honey blue-eyed white tree frogs? Um, we may have a small amount of those actually growing out right now. A lot of times when they breed adults together, um, they produce a wide variety of morphs of babies and everything, so we'd have to pick those out. How do you get rid of soil mites in a bioactive enclosure? Um, there's different ways. Some people utilize predatory mites. Um, a lot of times they'll kind of, those soil mites are just detritivore mites. They eat dead organic matter. So if you let the tank age a bit, they'll kind of have this big population boom and then they'll kind of wipe themselves out more or less. Um, generally, they don't have a huge negative impact on things. If they're detritivore mites, they can just be kind of unsightly and their population can build up where it can bother the animal if you're not careful. Um, I've heard some third party um, information that they can even um, isopod, some of the larger isopods and stuff will eat them, but I haven't confirmed that myself. Do you have plans to come to Canada? Um, right now, I know that's not an option with border control and stuff, but um, we originally did have plans to try to do a Canadian show this year. Um, a well-known virus that I don't have to name, mention <laughs> the name actually kind of screwed up those plans, but hopefully next year. Um, any red dart frogs? Um, big ones that stand out right now is we do have red frog beach basties, Bastimentos pamilio. Um, that'll be coming up for sale. Which animals can live in paludariums or paludaria? So paludaria is basically a vivarium. You have your live plants, you have a bit of a land mass, and you have a large water mass. Um, obviously there's different varieties of smaller fish that'll do well in paludaria. There's a lot of rasboras and smaller tetras. Um, in that case, keep in mind, you're still having to maintain that water um, just like you would in an aquarium doing regular water changes. Depending on the species, some dart frogs, especially little Epipetobates and thonii, little Santa Isabels, do really well. They're generally bred and found along creeks in the wild, so they do really well around water sources. And then a lot of the smaller tree frogs, like um, bird poop frogs, lemurs, hourglass, or clowns are really, really good um, paludaria inhabitants as well. And then finally, do you sell oxalotls? Not right now, but we will shortly. We're um, actually in the process of doing a lot of expansion here. We have a 66,000 square foot warehouse to fill up with animals over the next year, year and a half. So we're designing that out. And by the um, end of the year, or so we expect to have an oxalotl room built out, specifically kept at about 65 to 68 degrees, specifically for breeding, ha raising, and selling oxalotls out of. So that rounds up this edition of Frog Talk with Zachary Brinks, presented by myself, Zachary Brinks, and voice acted by myself, Zachary Brinks. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at joshesfrogs.com. So until next time, this is Zach with Frog Talk. Have a good night. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.